Hello everyone and welcome to my semi-final predictions of Euro 2024. Let's start off, it's Spain versus France. Very tough game to predict, especially as Spain, Danny Carvajal, is actually suspended after they won against Germany brilliantly 2-1. It was very close. I remember that at the end of the 90 minutes, Germany were really pushing and pushing. Gone equalised and they were constantly making chances after chances. But Spain, can I say, not just their thrilling attacking style of play, the energy going forward's fantastic. You know, their defence is so good. Like I said, Danny Carvajal, so calm, so experienced. You can see how much composure he has to put in those simple tackles and deceptions. And Cucurella, fantastic in terms of dealing with aerial threat. Fantastic overall as a defender. And Spain have a great defence. They've got great flowing football. But we look at France and their attack is a bit disappointing coming into this Euro tournament so far. I'd say that's probably the most disappointing thing about France at the moment. Especially the likes of Kylian Mbappe. He hasn't really took off at all. I mean, he did score that penalty against Poland. But other than that, he has looked good at times. But in terms of shooting and scoring, hasn't been too good. And that same can be said for the entire France side. It's been a bit meh in this Euro tournament for France overall. I mean, just look at their results. They could have easily lost it against Netherlands in the group stage. They didn't top their group, which people thought they would. They only drew twice in their group. They're quite low scoring, like I said about the attack, not quite hitting it. I mean, I would have thought of Kylian Mbappe and Griezmann up there. You would think that they would, you know, score loads of goals and it would be great attacking football, but it's not. Very low scoring. A bit like England, quite low scoring. Very Every single game they play is quite close. And now they're facing Spain, which knocked out the hosts. Not just a great, great, great Germany side, but the hosts. But overall, Spain look way more positive than France at the moment. France only just about won against Portugal on penalties. Only just about. It could have gone either way in terms of the penalty shootout. And they only just about got into the semi-finals. And I think France will struggle against that Spain side. I mean, let's look at it. Olmo, what a great player. A good goal to put Spain ahead of that Germany game. The 119th minute. Moreno, Michael Moreno with the goal. Late drama, absolute scenes. I've talked about how they're free-flowing football. I think it will destroy France. Really, really promising stuff. And not just that, we already know how Spain's got a great young side, a 16-year-old. Lamine Lamau, one absolute genius. He's 16 and he's in the starting 11 for Spain. It's something special. He's got some real whiz. Imagine 16 years old and you somehow get to the final and win the Euro tournament. That's never happened before and it's definitely highly probable that that could happen. And considering France in the attack is struggling, like I said with Cucurella in that defence and how Spain defend quite well, I mean they've got all clean sheets other than the Georgia game and Germany, but to be honest in Georgia and Germany they could have easily got a clean sheet and they only conceded one there. Yeah, France are definitely going to struggle and are definitely not going to score a goal in my opinion. You know what I'm going to say, the way everything has gone and what I've said is Spain are a better side even without Danny Carver Howe and all the other suspensions. I'm only going to do just about to Spain. I'm going to do low, low scoring because France's games are typically low scoring this year of tournament. Haven't been too impressed with France at all. And I'm going to go only just about what a late minute winner for Spain. 1-0 against France come the final whistle after 90 minutes. No extra time, no penalties. 1-0 to Spain and Spain will advance to the final which they'll be taking on either Netherlands or England, in my opinion. Let's get on to that game now. Netherlands versus England. Netherlands, can we talk about them? Cody Gakpo putting them through only just about against Turkey. Can I say Turkey? They put an absolute great shift against Netherlands. Can I, they had a great shift against Netherlands. They create so many opportunities against a great Netherlands side. And you know what, Turkey? They didn't play amazing, amazing against Austria. But against Netherlands, they actually put in a great shift. And I see Turkey as kind of like the average national team, in my opinion. And they faced Netherlands. I thought Netherlands would have a comfortable win, but they didn't. And in terms of Netherlands this year, a tournament, I feel like they did improve against Romania. But in the group stages, they're a bit mad when they face Austria. And against Turkey, could have easily gone either way. But the likes of Cody Gakpo, not just him, Memphis Depay as well. The combination of those two and the attack is fantastic. And the defence with Virgil van Dijk, an absolute rock at the back. Netherlands look very good. And I think Netherlands have played overall better than England in this year of tournament. 
despite, in my opinion, Netherlands hasn't played as well as I thought they would play this Euro tournament. I feel like this is going to be a close game between the two sides. There's going to be definitely a close game. Despite England not playing fantastic in the Euro tournament, I think it will be. No matter if England's against the worst ranked team, Iceland, or one of the best, France, England will somehow keep the scoreline very tight, no matter who's against. But against Switzerland, I thought England played actually the best they've played all Euro tournament. I know the first half an hour against Serbia was very good, but other than that, it was a bit poor. But England, I feel like they're a bit more positive. I feel like they're a bit more adventurous, I suppose is a good word. They're definitely more adventurous. And the likes of Kaibi Mainu really pushing up, you know, making some great runs. And then do you see Jude Bellingham, his roulette, then flick over. I mean, it's great flair, great skill. England look a bit better. The problem with England in the Switzerland game, I feel like it was the final third that was really the problem. I mean, not from the passing end, from the receiving end. But Kaio Saka did fantastic. The amount of times he dribbled past the player, got a great cross into the box. Harry Kane should be pouncing on those. As a striker that scored, what, like 30 goals in Bundesliga, one of the best strikers of all time, you could say, he should be getting on top of them. He seemed a bit slow, a bit sluggish, you could say, but we know he's a good player. We know he's a very good finisher for his time at Bayern Munich. But someone like Oli Watkins on the bench, I feel like would have been exactly what we needed to get onto Saka's balls or whoever was crossing in the ball. Because he has that movement with him. He's got that pace. He's faster. And he's got that energy that Kane didn't provide in that Switzerland game. Or maybe you play Oli Watkins next to Harry Kane. And if not, maybe the other player should support Harry Kane in that middle where Saka was pinging in the balls. Maybe the other players like Jude Bellingham or Kevin Manu should have given Saka some more options. That's the only problem with England was the final third. What a goal, can I say? I was celebrating. I was on the edge of my seat, especially that went down to penalties. And England are terrible at penalties. And so was Switzerland, because they don't have a great record for penalties either. And England put every single one of those penalties away, all five of them. There is no such thing as pressure in that game, in that penalty shootout for England. Fantastic by England. And Ezri Konza, you know what? I didn't know whether he was going to do the same job that Mark Gay did. And he made some great last ditch defending tackles. It was fantastic by Ezri Konza. And now Luke Shaw's returned. Kieran Trippier, obviously, the mistake that he's right footed and he's playing in left back and we want to cross it in straight away to have that quick flowing football. Luke Shaw's now there. He's left footed. And when he came on, it was fantastic. First thing he did was made, maybe it was a one two or, or something. And he ran up that pitch down the left. He crossed it in with his left. That's what we want fast paced movements. And Luke Shaw looked really good as soon as it came on. Hopefully, Luke Shaw's all fit and healthy to start against Netherlands, because if so, and if England could play as they did against Switzerland, I think it's enough to get a draw against the Netherlands side, which is very good. And I think we've got a chance. Overall, I think it would be a very similar game to the Switzerland game. A very similar game. It's going to be quite tight. And with England having a bit of morale, happiness, that they managed to get through that. I think overall, considering Netherlands also had a bit of a meh against Austria, only just about scraping against Turkey. I think it'll be 1-1 full time, a go into extra time, and yet again, I, don't think, I think it'll be goalless. And it'll go into penalties again, and honestly, I could say Netherlands to win the penalties. I could say England to win the penalties. I'm gonna say England because they were flawless in the penalty shootout against Switzerland. So I feel like England will win on penalties against Netherlands. Let me know what you think in terms of your predictions down in the comments. But for now, hopefully it's coming home for England.